Yes, yes, Aki. He was born in the season of uh, Saka or Tabernacles. Uh, that's when he came uh, uh, to fulfill the very feast that um, spoke of his coming. Uh, that's uh, that's when he came. And when he came, shepherds were still in the field, tending their flock. Certainly was not in the dead of winter. Some people might say, "Oh, but it was in um in in the land. They didn't have to worry about." winter no the truth is there are places in the land where it do get cold and even snow sometimes um, gets quite cold and in the winter season the shepherds are not out in the field you see absolutely he pitched his tent among us halal huya indeed beautiful Yes, he did. He pitched his tent among us. And that's what this feast is all about. You see, he pitched his tent among us. Halal huya. Praise Yahuwah. And we're just looking forward to him doing it permanently, which he will do, family, which he will do. And this time is a reminder of that, that he will do it, that he will do it. He's done it before and he will do it again. But the next time that he does it, it will be permanent. It will be permanent. Halal huya. Yes, indeed. Kumbuya ya. Halal huya. Arise and come. Yes. All right. Yes. So um. Uh, arise and come. Mm hmm. Yes, indeed. So, uh, we, we at this time, we reflect and we look forward to this promise. Because, family, this season of the feast, it's a promise to us that Yahuwah will arise and He will come. Yahuwah will arise and He will come. Ah, you know, last week I spoke about uh, Dahud and Shalomah. I spoke last week briefly about Dahud and Shalomah and the fact that Dahud was not allowed to build the Hekal. Dahud was not allowed to build the Hekal. And the reason why he was not allowed to build the Hekal was because he was a king of war. <laughs> oh, there's a sweet message in this. He was not allowed to build the Hekal because he was a king of war. Uh, he had blood on his hands, and so he was not allowed to build the Hekal. Uh, now, uh, family, let me ask you this. So that means if, 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 if one with blood on his hands is not allowed to build the Hekal, <laughs> man, it sounds like we, we, we're in trouble. We don't have no Hekal because the first time Yahuwah came, the first time he came, it would seem as if I don't see an Hekal. He ain't built nothing, did he? Or so it seemed. And then the next time he's supposed to come back, he's coming to war. He is coming to... He is coming with his vesture. And his vesture will be dipped in blood. His covering, his kanaf will be dipped in blood. It sounds like we ain't going to have no place to fellowship. We ain't going to have no place to gather because he got blood all over him. He ain't, there's no way he's going to be able to build the Hekal. Uh, but you know what it is? When he came, yes, he did build the Hekal. He did build his Hekal. You see? He did build his Hekal. His reign was established in the earth. And so he said to them that my kingdom has come. It's within you. Now, the Hekal is already prepared in the heavens. So Yahu Kanan say that in that day, Yahuwah showed him a new Shamayim and a new Aratz. And he saw a new Yerushalayim coming down Shamayim. 
a hekal that's already built. But now you know you have people who are looking for the sign. You know what sign people are looking for? The false sign. They're looking for the sign of anti-Mashiach. They're looking for the sign of the wicked. What is that sign? You have people waiting for the temple to be built in Yerushalayim. Built by who? Built by the imposters and it's going to deceive many. Because that's the false temple that will be built. But the Hekal that Yahuwah speaks of will not be built by hand by man's hand. No tool will be laid on it. No tools will be used on it. And that's what Torah taught us from the very beginning. That the dwelling place of Yahuwah was not to be built with any tools, but rather the hand of Yahuwah will build it. So his Hekal will the 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 dwelling place. The standing Hekal will ascend. Yahuwah will reestablish his Hekal in Yerushalayim. The, the temple that the Jews are building, working on building, that's false. That's just the enemy's tool to keep the masses in their um, sleep, in their state of sleep, in the state of thinking that they are right. In their wickedness you see yes so when Yahusha when Yahuwah came Yahusha he established his Hekal he came in peace he was beaten he was hung but he established his Hekal so it's already established now he's coming back he came and he suffered. Now he's coming back to take vengeance on the wicked. And this season is a reminder of that. Halal huya. It should be encouragement to those of Yahuwah's people who are being oppressed in this day. Because those who oppress us, in that day there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And you know whose teeth is going to be gnashing? It ain't going to be the people of Yasharal. But those who have oppressed us, they will wish that they never gave birth to children. It will be grievous for the wicked who have oppressed the people of Yahuwah all this time. And this time is a reminder to us of that. Take comfort in it. Now, um, hmm. I want to go to the book of, uh, again, the book I mentioned earlier. I want to read, I want to share here, family, if I may, from this book. Uh, personally, the way I look at this book, now they mentioned that in some places, in some writings that have been found, this actually... Uh, uh, is found in portions of the book of Daniel, this writing. There's a mic unmuted. This writing have been found in portions of the book of Daniel. Um, in other places, it's not present in the copies. Um, nonetheless, the way I, I see this writing is more so... Uh, uh, an historical preservation of the uh, experience of our ancestors, in particular these three, uh, Hananiah, Atsariah, uh, Ats and uh, uh, Masha'al, who they call Shadrach, and they call Mashak and Abed. Bad go. Um, but this is uh, uh, them preserving their experience, writing concerning their historical experience in Babal. Okay? Uh, and there's much to be learned from it. Now, family, I don't know how many people in this room at this very moment have heard said that. Uh, Danny Al kept the feast in captivity. How many people in here 
I've seen people, whether it be on YouTube or on Facebook, and they'll say that um, Danny Al kept the feast in captivity. Uh, uh, what's his name? Tobit kept the feast in captivity. So we should and must keep the feast in captivity. And if you're not keeping the feast, you're not keeping Torah. Uh, yes, yes, the Christians have certainly given us the Daniel fast for a long time. Um, yeah, there are people also. Uh, I don't know if there are many of them, but I've encountered a few of them who say this that Danny Al kept the feast in captivity. And we looked at that last week too in the book of Danny Al chapter 9 where Danny Al said that it was the season of the feast. That does not mean that he was keeping the feast in captivity. The season of the feast comes and goes no matter where you are. The season of the feast, seasons don't stop. The time of the feast is going to come no matter where you are. That's like in the book of um, Corinthians or in the book of Acts where it talks about Shahul in the days of the feast that we stayed in um, wherever it was that he stayed. And then after the days of the feast had passed, he moved on and went on back into Yer to Yerushalayim. And people say, see, Shahul kept the feast over here. Shahul, the scripture didn't say that. The time of the feast came and what he decided to do was to settle among the scattered people that were living in that region. No doubt they assembled. They didn't think they were keeping the feast because they're specifically instructed that you can't keep the feast on foreign so soil. Um, we just read from the book of Tahalim that said that. But they're specifically instructed not to keep the feast on foreign soil. So they assembled. Some people are confusing. Um, getting uh, a turkey chop or lamb chop or whatever from shop right and 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 you know making a meal and getting some weeds and uh, a few bottles of wine and having everybody over that, that that's keeping the feast but that's not keeping the feast and 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 when to go to that extent yahuwah warns us not even to do that because what we're doing is we're creating our own instructions when we go to that extent nothing wrong with us assembling looking forward and longing reflecting and desiring nothing wrong with assembling but to say that be, Yeah, but to say that by doing that, we have kept the feast and then to pat ourselves on the back and then say to somebody, you're not Yasharal because you're breaking Torah. You didn't keep the feast. Uh, no, actually, you broke Torah by creating your own Torah. Uh, you see. Uh, but yes, in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, because Daniel talk about the time of the feast, they say, see, Daniel kept the feast in captivity. They say, um, Toby kept the feast in captivity. In reality, um, the, the, the Tobit came home, his wife had made preparations, but even if Tobit did keep the feast in captivity, that's something Tobit did against Yahuwah's word. Simply because Tobit partook in this meal that was, cre was made at the time of the feast does not mean that it was acceptable by Yahuwah. How many times we find people doing, oh, tell me something now. Dahud perched on the top of his, um, his home, saw Bathsheba Bat taking a bath, felt like he had to have her, sent to get her, got her pregnant, have her husband killed, she then became his asha and is recorded in scripture. Because it's recorded, does that make what he did right? 
there are many things recorded in Scripture that even though it's recorded, does it make it right? No, it don't make it right. It's there to teach us something, though. You see? So, even if Tobita take it up on himself, he came home, his wife had this prepared, and he partook. But even if he had taken it up on himself to go about and to say, come on, Yasharal, we're going to have us a big feast over here in this captivity. Even if he did that, and him being to beat an upright man in the eyes of Yahuwah, even if he did that, he would have been wrong. Even though otherwise he was upright, in that instant, he would have been wrong. So simply because he did, doesn't make it right. Because the scripture makes it clear that it is wrong. No man can change the instructions of Yahuwah. You see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we think of in the book of Judges. My wife just brought up Micah from the book of Judges. Uh, he was of the tribe of Louis. No, as a matter of fact, he wasn't from the tribe of Louis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. What he did was his mom was saving some money for him. And what he did, he went and stole the money from his mom before she gave, actually gave it to him. She, when she realized the money was missing, she called a curse down upon the one who stole the money. When he heard her calling down a curse upon the one who stole the money, he got scared and he went to her and said, Mom, you know, I, I took the money. Oh, Mom said, Oh, you did, son. Oh, I was saving it for you. As a matter of fact, now, here you go. You could have the rest of it. And and, and, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to go buy you some idols. I'm going to buy you a few idols. And so she went and bought him some images, and he established his own temple, his own hekal. Yes, but, and for a time, he, he hired somebody to be priest that was not even of the tribe of Louis. But then one day came along a, a young priest, a young man from the tribe of Louis, and Yasharal at this time was in madness and disarray. There was no leader in Yasharal. And so everybody was doing what was right in their own eyes. And then come this young man who probably was not even trained in the service of Yahuwah. Taught, instructed in the service of Yahuwah. And uh, what he did was Micah hired him. He said, here man, you know what? I'll pay you to be a priest. You see? I'll, I'll pay you to be a priest. Too. You see, and uh, uh, so he, he said, I'll, 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 I'll pay you to be a priest. And Yahuwah did not appoint him. He was from the tribe of Louis, but he was not appointed by Yahuwah, but he became a priest in Micah's house. And eventually the only thing that came from it was more chaos. Now simply because Micah built a temple. <laughs> Uh, does that make that acceptable because he built a temple? No, it doesn't. He did a whole lot of wrong in building a temple. A whole lot of wrong. Simply because he went and hired somebody from the tribe of Louis, does that make it acceptable? No, it didn't. You see. Um, now, no, no, no. There needs to be some correction there, Aki. Uh, because... To say that because we're in captivity, we can't keep the law is not correct. Uh, and certainly not what I'm saying. Um, what is the law? What is Yahuwah's instructions? What is his Torah? Uh, you see, the problem is people are talking about keeping Torah and keeping the law and don't even know what Torah says. Because to do the feast, to say for somebody to say they are keeping the feast in captivity, is actually anti-Torah. Anti-Torah. Let me write that. Anti-Torah. Yet, some people say not to do it is anti-Torah. Right? Anti-Torah. So, when somebody actually make a declaration that I kept the feast... 
you know, uh, we we did Passover, and if you're not doing, if you didn't keep Passover this year, you broke Torah. The person who declared that they kept Passover, they actually broke Torah according to Scripture. You see, um, uh, wait, uh, oh no, 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 no. Actually, right. Well, no, there are no consequences um, for not doing something that we are told we can't do. Uh, so when Yahuwah said not to do something, if you don't do it, there is no consequence for not doing it. There is consequence for doing what he's tell us not to do or for failing to do what we, we are commanded to do but um, if he says not to do something then already he did not establish a consequence for not doing what he tell you not to do but he does establish consequences for doing what he tell you not to do <laughs> you see I hope that is not confusing um, yeah but the, he, there are consequences for doing what he tells us not to do you see um, yeah, but uh, the scriptures makes it clear. Now, I'm going to go to this text. Bear with me here, family. It's getting late. Let me go to the text before it gets any later. Okay? Let me go to the text. This is So this is from the writings of uh, who they call Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is a, a historical account of their experience in Babao. And they walked in the midst of the fire, praising Allahim and giving esteem to Yahuwah. Then... Uh, let me ask you something before we go any further. You see how that's worded? Does that suggest that we have one mighty one named Elohim and another one named Yahuwah? You know, yeah. Now, you find this a lot in translation. That's why people really are sold out on the doctrine of the Trinity. But keep in mind what you're reading. You're reading translation. So when you go, for example, in a renewed contract in translation, you keep seeing this distinction between Yahuwah and uh, Mashiach who is Yahusha, who they uh, put a pagan name upon as Jesus. And the way it's written, it sounds like it creates this separation and distinction. Well, when you, whenever you do that, keep in mind here, ask yourself this question. Is there a difference between Elohim and Yahuwah? No, that's translation and bad translation. Bad translation is what create that kind of, uh, that, that create that idea, bad translation. Okay. Now, um, let's, uh, let's uh, go back to the text. And they walked in the midst of the fire, praising Elohim and giving esteem to Yahuwah. Then Atsar, Atsariah stood up. I think his name is Atsariahu. Stood up and prayed on this manner. And opening his mouth in the midst of the fire said, Barak are you, O Yahuwah, or Elohim of our fathers. Your name is worthy to be praised and esteemed forevermore. For you are set apart in all the things that you have done to us. Yea, true are all your works. Your ways are right and all your judgments truth. Now, family, keep in mind, now this is a man in the midst of the furnace. He was thrown into the fire. Read the book of Daniel. This is who Daniel is right, speaking about in the, in the writings. They're thrown into the fire. Why? Why were they thrown in the fire? Let's do a little bit of a reflection on history. So why were they thrown in the fire again here, family? They're in the midst of the fire. Why were they thrown in the fire? They would not bow to the image of the beast. They would not bow to the image set up by the beast. I believe the day will come when, because we refuse to, the, to bow to the image of the beast, what's the image of the beast? Jesus. Jesus. I believe the day will come when, because we refuse to bow to the image of the beast, we too will be thrown in the fire. Maybe not a literal fire. It might be in front of a firing squad. It might be in front of something. It might be whatever. We'll be thrown in the fire. I uh, just saw a picture of a young boy in Pennsylvania that got up on a um, statue of Zeus, Jesus. 
doing a lewd act or acting as if Jesus was doing something, you know, really, uh, you know, uh, terrible um, to him. Took a picture of it and must have posted it to Facebook and the authorities got a hold of it. And now they, they're finding him and sending him, sending him to jail and they refuse to possibly. Uh, possibly. possibly send him to jail. And they refuse to reconsider dropping any charges against him because he did this to Jesus, to the image of the beast. He did this to the image of the beast and the beast is not going to stand for anybody doing this to their image, just like it was in Babal back then, so it is today, the image of the beast. So Nebuchadnezzar set it up, he set up an image of the beast, an image set up by the beast. That's what the image of the beast is. Just like today, we have the image of the beast. People are waiting for the image of the beast. Don't realize the image of the beast have been around us for the longest time. That image of the beast is no other than Jesus. That's the image given to us by the beast. Who is the beast? The system. The beast is a system. Stop looking for a man. It's a system. The beast is among us. You know why we think it's a man? Because the beast have us looking for a man. Because in the book of Revelation, where it does not say a man, the, 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 the system put a man. And it does not say a man. It says man. It says 666, the number of a man is what the translation says. But you look at it in the Greek, it doesn't say a man. It says the number of man, the number of the system. And the system has set up an image just like it always have. Do you know why Yasharal was driven out of, out of their land by the Romans the final time? In about uh, 147, uh, you know, according to Roman timetable. You know why they were driven out? Because Caesar was supposed to be worshipped. Caesar, the Caesars, by the way, Caesar is not the name of a person. Caesar is the title of individuals in the system. In other words, the system is Caesar. And when you step into, into a position of leading the system, you become Caesar. So people might think that Caesar was a name of one person. Caesar is not the name of a person. Caesar is the name of the system back then. That's how the system was named. The name of the system was Caesar. Today, the name of the system is President. <laughs> or Salad. <laughs> okay. So, when uh, the people, they brought in an image of Caesar into Yerushalayim and commanded that all of Yasharal must bow down to the image the image of the beast, Yasharal, those who were serious about serving Yahuwah and took Yahuwah's instruction about images seriously, they refused to bow to the image and that was enough for them to bring war and siege to Yerushalayim. And so our people were driven out for the final time. Then, because they refused to bow to the image of the beast. They were driven out and some were taken into captivity. Many were taken into captivity and many were put to death. Because they refused to bow to the image of the beast. At that time, the image of the, the beast was Caesar. Now, another image of the beast have been established through the Spanish emperor. And it's another Caesar. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Yasharal was driven out, taken, put into slavery, killed, maimed, and all of this because they refused to bow to an image of Caesar, the image of the beast. They were taken into captivity. Again, they're taken into captivity, 
and are called and caused to bow to another image of the beast, which, by the way, again, was another Caesar. Which Caesar was this? What's his name? So Caesar Augustus was the first one. Now, we have the image of another Caesar, Caesar Borgias. That's his name. I hope I didn't mess it up. Caesar Borgias. Don't matter one bit to me whether I mess it up or not. I just, I, I just hope I say it in, uh, clear enough for you to understand who I'm talking about. <laughs> We're sitting around waiting for the image of the beast because the liars have lied to us and have us looking for a man. Uh, the, the, whatever. Anti-Mashiach and then we Anti-Christ Anti-Christ is anti-Mashiach I am anti-Christ Praise Yahuwah I am anti-Christus I am anti-Caesar Borgias So, uh, yes, so you see the image. So, so, so that's how they, so they, now they're being compelled to bow to the image in Babal. They're being compelled to bow to the image. And because they did not bow, they say, we will not bow, O king. Yahuwah is able to deliver us. But even if he don't, we will not bow. You know, the thing about this, this portion of the book of Daniel that is taken, that has been removed, that the book of Daniel don't show, I, I don't know how many people here remi remember me saying that the Bible, a Christian book, have a way of making everything super spiritual. The Bible, a Christian book, have a way of making everything super spiritual. So, uh, and I said that in regards to how the word angel is used in the Bible. The word angel is not found in scripture, does not belong in scripture. It's actually um, a, a name for pagan beings. For, 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 it's a name for pagan beings. Angels is not a scriptural word or scriptural name. But it's used in the Bible um, to hyper-spiritualize the scriptures. We are in the scriptures, the word that is actually used would be malaak or messenger. And a messenger is not necessarily a being out of Shamayim. But sometimes, many times, the, the, when the scripture speaks of a messenger from Yahuwah or a messenger of Yahuwah, is simply speaking about a servant of Yahuwah, a man that Yahuwah raised up to do his work. Yaram Yahu, Yasha Yahu, uh, 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 whoever you want to name, Nakum Yahu, whatever, whoever you want to name, they are messengers of Yahuwah, men raised up. Now, the Christian church, when it got a hold of Yahuwah's word, it twisted, and in many cases, especially in the, in the, especially in the renewed contract, you see the word angel over and over again. That's something taken from Greek mythology. It's not found in scripture. They're winged beings taken from Greek mythology. They are servants of Hades. They are the servants of Hades. Who is Hades? Hades is Zeus's brother. And if you don't, and Hades was given authority to rule hell, to rule the underworld. And if you don't serve Zeus, if you don't bow to Zeus, if you don't do the will of Zeus, Zeus sends you down to the underworld to his brother Hades, and Hades punishes you for not doing the will of his brother Zeus. So Zeus sends you to hell so that Hades, his brother, can punish you. And the ones, I guess, the ones that take you down there to hell is the angels. Hell's angels. <laughs> Ah, okay, now, yes, so, uh, now, so we believe all kinds of nonsense based on the garbage that have been fed to us through these folks.
we continue to celebrate Columbus Day when Columbus takes great pride in in stating that he has managed to convert the so-called New World. To the religion of Europe Christianity truth does not come from the West it comes from the East so if the West was the source of truth then there is something wrong with that truth anyway so they were thrown in the fire because they refused to bow to the image of the beast all right uh, so now let's pick up from where we were. And they walked in the midst of the fire, praising Elohim and giving esteem to Yahuwah. Then Atsariah Atsar stood up and prayed on this manner and opening his mouth in the midst of the fire said, Barak are you, O Yahuwah Elohim of our fathers. Your name is worthy to be praised and esteemed forevermore. For you are set apart in all the things that you have done to us. You are right in all the things that you have done to us. Yea, true are all your works. Your ways are right and all your judgments truth in all the things that you have brought upon us. And upon the set apart city of our fathers, even Yerushalayim, you have executed true judgment. For according to truth and judgment, did you bring all these things upon us because of our sins, because of our transgressions. For we have sinned and committed iniquity departing from you. That's why we suffer. In all things, in all things have we trespassed and not obeyed your commands nor kept them neither done as though neither done as you have commanded us that it might go well with us could you unmute that for me oh you're okay never mind wherefore all that you have brought upon us and everything that you have done to us you have done in true judgment and you did deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies Torahless enemies most hateful forsakers of Elohim and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world Yahuwah always turn us over to the most wicked in all the world every time Yasharal was driven out of the land you know where they got turned to to the most wicked in all the world unjust you call America the house of justice no Yahuwah call it the house of wickedness and one day this wicked house is going to tumble one day this wicked house is going to crash and it's going to burn and great will be the destruction of this house you see yeah so they're not able to have their foot on our necks because they're so righteous because they're so set apart no they're able to have their foot on our necks because Yahuwah know that they're wicked enough to do the job <laughs> that's it stop praising this abominable beast huh now and now verse 10 and now we cannot open our mouths we are become a shame and reproach to your servants and to them that worship you yet deliver us not up totally for your name's sake neither disannul neither cancel your contract with us and cause not your mercy to depart from us for your beloved abraham's sake for your servants yatsak's sake and for your set apart yasharal's sake to whom you spoke and promised that you would multiply their seed as the stars of Shamayim and as the sand that lies upon the seashore. For we, O Yahuwah, are become less than any nation. Therefore we, O Yahuwah, are become less than any nation and be kept under this day in all the world because of our sins. Is that our reality? Yes, it is. Neither, verse 15, 
verse 15, neither is there at this time prince or prophet or leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense or place to sacrifice before you and to find mercy. Halal huya. Now, family, this is taken from the book of Daniel. This is a portion of Daniel that is not found now in the book as it is. And there are people saying that Daniel kept the feast while in captivity. Now, this is them crying out in captivity, the same captivity that Daniel was in. And they say, neither is there at this time prince or prophet or leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense or place to sacrifice before you and to find mercy now for the person huh yes that's them crying out in the fire now for the person who don't know the instructions of torah about keeping the feast they will ignorantly still read this and say oh we, but we can keep the feast where we are no that's somebody who is clueless about the scriptures and really need to be quiet and go learn the scriptures before they before they corrupt themselves more. When you know what the scripture says about the feast, then you know what these young men are crying out and saying. They long to keep the feast, but there is no place. There is not a prince. We have no leader. We have not we have not our own government. There is no prophet. No one to bring us the word of Yahuwah to comfort us. There is no leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation. Worship, bowing down or incense or place to sacrifice before you and to find mercy. I'm going to continue. But I, wanna, I want that to sink in. I'm recording this because I'm putting it on people in captivity. Who need to stop making up our own religion. You see. A whole lot of people have. Labeled me as a false teacher. Uh, said all kinds of stuff about me. Tell all kinds of people about me. And it's not my word. It's Yahuwah's word. If you can't see it. It's so simple and it's so plain. If you can't see it, you're absolutely blind. Matter of fact, you know what Yahuwah calls you? Calls you a blind guide, a dumb dog. He says that uh, you swallow a camel and strain at a gnat. Call you hypocrite. He say, woe to you who lead my people astray. How about we stop teaching our own commands and dedicate ourselves to learning Yahuwah's word and then proclaiming it how about we eat the word before we make any attempt to speak the word how about we allow the word to become bitter in our bellies and sweet in our mouth how about we allow Yahuwah's word to purge us and to cleanse us make us right and then we proclaim it Instead of stop trying to be the next T.D. Jakes or the next Eddie Long or the next Juanita Bynum or the next whoever that have done nothing but evil to our people. Certainly has, a could. The sad part to it is you know what's sad? It's sad to see somebody totally blinded declaring that they can see. They're walking into a oncoming Mack truck and you're trying to grab their hand and trying to get them out of the way and they're swinging their stick, almost blinding you, telling you, get off of me, I got this. Yahuwah's word is very straightforward, very simple. You know what's amazing? You don't even have to dig this far to see it. It's right there in the books that they did give us. It's right there. Real simple. Why is it that so many, these so-called priests and prophets and whatever, 
mores and whoever. Why do you keep, let me ask you a personal question. Why do you keep lying to our people? Why do you keep creating divisions and strifes among our people? By continuing to feed them falsehood. Why do you keep hindering our people? In this season of the feast, I think it's important that we reflect on ourselves, examine ourselves by Yahuwah's contextual word and repent. Yahuwah says, you know the reason for this? You're lazy. You have become fat with grease, he says. Sleeping, lying down, you cannot bark. Danger coming and you can't even warn. Yasha Yahu 56, verse 10 through 12. Okay, so this is the petition of men who were serious about serving Yahuwah. Could you unplug that phone for me, please, babe? Who were serious about serving Yahuwah. This is a petition from men who were serious about serving Yahuwah, recognizing that they can't bring the sacrifices, they can't do any of this. And so they cry out to Yahuwah and they say this. Nevertheless, in a contrite heart, a broken heart, a low heart, a humbled heart, and a humble spirit. Let us be accepted. Like as in the burnt offerings. No, not that we're going to try to do anything. But please, accept the little bit of service that we can give you. And let it be to you like the burnt offerings that you expect for us to bring. The rams of the rams and bullocks. Like as in ten thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be in your sight this day. What is the sacrifice that they're presenting? They're not in a position to present the sacrifices required. So they, sa they offer up the sacrifice of the fruit of their lips. Let it be to you, Yahuwah, like as in the burnt offerings of rams and bullocks. And I want you to hear the beautiful sacrifice of their lips that they're getting ready to offer up. I'm going to read it. Oh, I'm sorry. The screen is not being shared. I just noticed that. So sorry about that. Let me go back. Okay. So let our sacrifice, the sacrifice of our lips, be in your sight this day. And grant that we may wholly go after you, for they shall not be confounded that put their trust in you. And now, we follow you with all our heart. We fear you and seek your face. To follow Yahuwah with all our heart is to refrain from doing what he commands us not to do. To follow Yahuwah with all our heart is to refuse to do what he commands us not to do and to do what we are commanded to do. And now we follow thee with all our heart. We fear you and seek your face. Put us not to shame, but deal with us after your loving kindness and according to the multitude of your mercy. Yes, Yahuwah is merciful. He has a multitude of mercy, great mercy. Deliver us also. What is mercy? Yahuwah giving to us what we don't deserve. We, no, Yahuwah withholding from us what we don't deserve. And what is his favor? His loving kindness, him giving to us what we do, what we have not earned. Deliver us also according to your marvelous works. And give esteem to your name, O Yahuwah. And let all them that do your servants hurt be ashamed. And let them be confounded in all their power and might. And let their strength be broken. And let them know that you are Yahuwah, the only Elohim and esteemed over all the world. And the king's servants that put them in ceased not to make the oven hot with ro rosin, pitch, tow, and small wood. Boy, they were putting some stuff in that 
oven that they knew was going to create some real heat so that the flame streamed forth above the furnace 40 and 9 cubits and it passed through and burned those Chaldeans it found about the furnace but the messenger here you see them have the word angel but the messenger of Yahuwah came down into the oven the messenger now the messenger and that's something else for us to look at who is the messenger of yahuwah you see when the scriptures talk about the messenger of yahuwah pay attention when it speaks of a messenger of yahuwah that's a difference there's a difference so the scripture speaks of the messenger of yahuwah and it speaks of a messenger of yahuwah when the scripture speaks of the messenger of yahuwah it is speaking of yahuwah taking on another form the messenger of yahuwah but the messenger of Yahuwah came down, which in, in other words, Yahuwah himself came down, halal huya. But the messenger of Yahuwah came down into the oven together with Atsariya Atsar and his fellows and smote the flame of the fire out of the oven. Yahuwah came down and he put it out and made the midst of the furnace as it had been a moist whistling wind so that the fire touched them not at all, neither hurt nor troubled them. Then the three... As out of one mouth praised, they steamed, and Barak Alahim in the furnace saying, Barak are you, O Yahuwah Alahim of our fathers, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. And Barak is your esteemed and set apart name, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. Barak are you in the Hekal of your set apart esteem, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. Barak are you. That behold the depths and sit us upon the cherubim, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. Barak are you on the esteemed throne of your kingdom, and to be praised and esteemed above all forever. Barak are you in the firmament of Shamayim, and above all to be praised and esteemed forever. O you heavens, Barak Yahuwah. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O you messengers of Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak you Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O all you waters that be above the heavens, Barak you Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O all you powers of Yahuwah, Barak you Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you sun and moon, Barak you Yahuwah, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you stars of Shamayim, Barak you Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O every shower and dew, Barak you Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you fire and heat, Barak you Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you winter and summer, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you dews and storms of snow, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you nights and day, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you lights and darkness, Barak you, Yahuwah, Praise and exalt him above all forever. O you ice and cold, Barak you, Yahuwah. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O you frost and snow, Barak you, Yahuwah. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O you lightnings and clouds, Barak you, Yahuwah. Praise and exalt him above all forever. O let the earth, Barak Yahuwah, Praise and exalt him above all forever. O you mountains and little hills, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O all you things that grow on the earth, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you fountains, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you seas and rivers, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you whales and all that move in the waters, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you fowls of the air, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you beast and cattle, 
Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you children of men, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O Yasharal, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you priest of Yahuwah, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O you servants of Yahuwah, Barak you, Yahuwah, Praise and exalt him above all forever. O you spirits and beings of the righteous, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever. O Ananias, Azarias, and Masha'al, Barak you, Yahuwah, praise and exalt him above all forever, for he hath delivered us from, uh, from the grave from Shahul, and saved us from the hand of death, and delivered us out of the midst of the furnace and burning flame, even out of the midst of the fire hath he delivered us. Oh, give thanks unto Yahuwah, because he is filled, filled with favor, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, all you that worship Yahuwah, Barak the Alahim of Alahim, praise him, and give him thanks, for his mercy endures forever. Halal hu Yahuwah. Halal hu Yah. To Yahuwah be all praise, all honor, and all esteem. We barak Yahuwah forever and ever. Halal hu Yah. Praise Yahuwah. Halal hu Yah. Praise Yah. I praise Yahuwah for his word. How can anyone who is set apart and right in the eyes of Yahuwah ever think of removing such a word from the word of Yahuwah? How can anyone who wants to give Yahuwah praise and esteem think of removing such great esteem from Yahuwah's word? Only the wicked could, done, could do such. Praise Yah. Well, family, it is my hope that uh, our fellowship today has been truly a baraka to you. Uh, I, 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 I know that um, I've kept you late. Um, and uh, I, as much as I want to apologize, I, how can I? How can I? I won't apologize, but I will say thank you for being as patient as you have been. Um, Akut, I don't know what time it is, if we are beyond our limit for recording one hour time frame. Um, uh, okay. Well, what I'll do, I don't know if there are any comments or questions before we close. I want to make sure that the, if there are, that you have the opportunity to, uh, to, uh, 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 she, it, you know, to come to the mic. Um, but let me just stop the recording where it's at now and then we'll come back just in case there are any comments or questions. Let me stop the recording. I see Aki Dani Al Praise ya. Uh, let me stop the recording and restart.